Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the approach to ABG. In order to interpret ABG correctly, we need to know the normal ranges of pH CO2 and HCO3, where pH is between 7.35 to 7.45, CO2 between 35 and 45, and HCO3 is between 22 to 26 milli equivalent per liter. But when these numbers change, how do we know whether it was for a respiratory cause or a metabolic cause? The respiratory system is responsible for CO2, meaning if CO2 increases, this causes acidosis, which is respiratory acidosis. And if CO2 decreases, this causes alkalosis or respiratory alkalosis. The same goes for the metabolic system, which is responsible for HCO3. When HCO3 increases, this causes alkalosis or metabolic alkalosis. However, when HCO3 decreases, this causes acidosis or metabolic acidosis. The biochemistry behind this is this equation. When the lung starts retaining CO2, the balance shifts toward the production of carbonic acid, which increases the acidity of blood, therefore lowering the pH and vice versa. Whereas HCO3 is the molecule that causes a washout of hydrogen ion which causes the shift of the equation to carbonic acid, which is in this case less acidic than the H ion, causing less acidity or even alkalinity of the blood. First step of interpreting ABG is checking the pH value. If it was lower than 7.35, then this is acidic. And if it was higher than 7.45, then this is alkalotic. What if the pH of the blood is acidic, which is less than 7.35? We first check CO2, where if it was increased, as in this case, it is respiratory acidosis. If it was normal, then we check HCO3. And if it was decreased, less than 22 milli equivalent per liter, then this is metabolic acidosis. However, if CO2 is increased together with HCO3, then this is respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation. And if HCO3 is decreased together with CO2, then this is metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation. The other scenario will be if the pH value is more than 7.45, which is alkalotic. Then we check CO2. If CO2 is decreased, then this is respiratory alkalosis. If it was normal, then we check H HCO3. If it was increased, then this is metabolic alkalosis. Notice that when the arrows move together, that is when HCO3 is increased and CO2 is increased as well, then this is metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. The same goes to respiratory alkalosis compensated metabolically. When the CO2 is decreased together with the decrease of HCO3, this is respiratory alkalosis with metabolic compensation. The last scenario we have is mixed acidosis, where we both have an increase in CO2 as well as a decrease in HCO3. Then this is mixed acidosis of both causes, respiratory acidosis together with metabolic acidosis. The same goes with mixed alkalosis where CO2 is decreased and HCO3 is increased. Then this is mixed alkalosis. What are the causes of metabolic acidosis? It's basically the increased of acid ingestion or decreased acid secretion. Some examples we have are lactic acidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis, diarrhea, renal tubular acidosis, Addison disease, uremia, drugs as acetazolamide, spironolactone, iron, etc. Causes of metabolic alkalosis, on the other hand, is the increased acid loss or HCO3 excess. Examples, vomiting, loop diuretic, hyperaldosteronism, antacid use. What are the causes of respiratory acidosis? It's the hypoventilation that causes the increased CO2, the retaining of CO2. Example, airway obstruction, acute lung disease such as asthma, chronic lung disease such as COPD, respiratory depression if the patient is taking opioids or sedatives, whereas the causes of respiratory alkalosis is hyperventilation. There is washout of CO2. So the amount of CO2 present is decreased. Examples, panic attacks, hypoxemia, pulmonary embolism. Thank you.